As a dermatologist, I get patients coming in all the time who are concerned about the crepiness of their skin. As they age, they're starting to notice more skin laxity, a thinning of the skin, maybe they're bruising easier than they used to, and they all wanna know what they can do to reverse that or eliminate it altogether. And so I'm gonna be sharing with you my top seven tips to help improve the crepey appearance of your skin so that you don't see that develop any further or that if you don't have it yet, that you can prevent it from ever happening in the first place. So I promise that if you follow these tips, you are going to notice an improvement in the texture, tone, quality of your skin. And you can do these at home. They're pretty easy without having to go and visit a doctor. First off, what is a crepiness to the skin? What is going on here? So the skin is starting to thin. Once we get past the age of 30, our body starts to lose about 1% of our collagen per year because we're always making and degrading collagen. But as we get older, we don't make it as fast as we're losing it. And so we're losing more collagen, the skin becomes thinner. Over time, the elastin fibers that give our skin that stretchiness and that bounce, they also start to degrade. And so we get more skin laxity in addition to skin thinning. Usually this is gonna be accompanied by an increased risk of bruising and pigmentation, sunspots, liver spots. All of those things are really frustrating and especially if somebody has taken great care of the skin of their face by using sunscreen, but then the back of their hands, their arms, their neck, that is really starting to show their age and they wanna help reduce the appearance of that crepey skin, that thinning skin. And so we're gonna dive into the tips and tell you exactly what you can do at home to help improve the appearance of that skin. The number one tip that I'm gonna to recommend to everybody is that you moisturize your skin when you get out of the shower. Whenever you shower or bathe, that is the perfect time to apply a moisturizer that has ceramides in it that is fragrance free and unlikely to cause irritation. Ceramides are the lipids and they're part of the building blocks of our skin barrier because we want to really fortify that barrier and prevent water loss. As the skin loses water, it becomes dry and dull in appearance. You're more likely to see those fine lines develop and that's going to give away the age of the person as their skin gets thinner and drier. And so lock in that hydration every single day after you shower or bathe. That's one of the keys to help promote a healthy skin appearance. The second tip that I'm gonna recommend also has to do with moisturizing, but here is where we're going to use an active ingredient in our moisturizer. So it is gonna cost a little bit more money, but I strongly recommend that you pick up a retinol body lotion. So the retinol that we would normally use on our face is coming in a gel, a lotion, or a serum, and it's really designed to be strong enough for the face, but it's either gonna to be too expensive to apply all over the body, or it's going to be too irritating to use in some of those other areas. This is why I strongly recommend picking up a retinol body moisturizer. It's gonna be formulated with a percentage of retinol retinol that is unlikely to cause dryness or irritation, but retinol is so key to helping signal to your body to build and produce more healthy collagen. And you really need more collagen in order to help reduce the appearance of that crepey skin. So I'm going to leave some brand recommendations down in the video description so that you can find one that's a price point that's reasonable for you, but this is going to be just a little bit more expensive than a typical moisturizer that you'll use right out of the shower. But you Use that retinol body lotion every night before bed. You gotta take a little bit of extra time and lather up with that on all of the areas that you're starting to notice that skin thinning or crepiness so that you can start to build healthier collagen in those areas. The next tip that I love to recommend for my patients is a pretty easy one to implement and that is to supplement your diet with collagen peptides. Now there is a little bit of controversy around this and some people discount it altogether. But when I have looked at the data around supplementing with collagen peptides, over Overall, I feel like the balance of evidence supports the use of collagen peptide supplementation. So collagen peptides are going to be giving you the types of amino acids that your body needs to help produce more collagen in your own body, and they contain a specific type of amino acid called hydroxyproline. Now the criticism with taking collagen peptides is that your body doesn't get these things in, absorb them, and know that they're all supposed to go directly to the skin. Your body will use these amino acids in the areas that it is needed, but if you are trying to produce more collagen, you wanna make sure that you have all of the right complement of amino acids that will be included 
in that collagen building process. And there is some evidence to suggest that that unique type of amino acid called hydroxyproline does act as a signaling molecule to help stimulate the production of collagen. And so that's why I think that there is an overall benefit to supplementing with collagen peptides. Now there are a lot of brands available on the market and some of them can be more expensive than others. And of course, every single brand is going to claim that theirs is the best, that they have the most studies and that no one else even compares. So I'm gonna leave some links down in the video description for the brands that I actually recommend and use myself. These can, if they're formulated properly, be used in hot or cold water. Now you do have to be careful not to get that beverage too hot because it can degrade the amino acids. So generally most brands recommend that you don't heat that beverage up above 220 degrees. When I use collagen peptides, I always make sure that the beverage stays under 200 degrees just so that I know that I'm safe, I'm not degrading that. But a lot of times I'll use flavored versions to go in my sports drink or in a smoothie if I'm making one of those. And so those are all tips and tricks to help improve the types of nutrition that your body needs to help build healthy collagen in the skin. While we're on the subject of diet, I also recommend that you eat a diet that's high in protein. Whether you like to use animal proteins or not, make sure you're getting plenty of protein in the body. It's essential for building collagen. And also make sure you're getting good vegetables, fiber. Those types of things are gonna help support your gut health and overall that's all connected to the health of your skin. The next thing you can do if you're noticing thinning or crepey skin is to stop or reduce alcohol consumption. Alcohol has essentially no redeeming qualities when it comes to your health. Even if you're a social drinker and you like it because it makes you a little more comfortable in social settings, like I understand and I'm not asking you to 100% give it up, but just know that the more alcohol that you consume above zero drinks per week will slow down collagen production and it will increase the degradation of your collagen. So alcohol is not good for your skin in any way. So if you can reduce or eliminate the consumption of alcohol, it is gonna have a positive effect on your skin, especially that crepiness, that dryness, that dullness or dark circles under your eyes because it does impact your sleep as well, which leads us into the next tip and that is to get seven to eight hours of sleep every single night. Make sure that you're going to bed at a consistent time. Make sure that you're waking up around the same time and that you're doing your best to get quality restorative sleep. There's tools out there if you have trouble sleeping or you wanna know how you can improve your sleep. I personally use the Aura Ring every night. I sync that to my phone and I look at my sleep data from the night before and I can then look back at the day before and see if I ate certain things or if I delayed my bedtime, anything that would impact the quality of my sleep, it's all tracked right there on my ring. You don't necessarily have to get one of those, but make sure you have good sleep hygiene practices. While you sleep, that is the time that your body is repairing any damage to your body, including your skin. So if you wanna build healthy collagen, you wanna repair any damage that happened to your collagen or elastin fibers, you really need to get good quality restorative sleep in order to preserve the health of your skin. Tip number six is to use an antioxidant serum or lotion of some kind in the areas that you're trying to reduce that crepey appearance. So this is typically gonna be things like a vitamin C serum or other equivalent antioxidant to help resolve the free radicals that you're exposed to during the day. We're all exposed to UV rays, we're exposed to environmental toxins and pollution that can create free radicals. And these are tiny little free electrons that can kind of float around in your cells and break up your DNA, break down your collagen. And so using an antioxidant serum can help to neutralize those free radicals. So you can take any vitamin C serum that you would use for your face and you can apply that over your arms, take it down on your neck. I always recommend and if you're doing facial skincare, to take that product down onto your neck as well, because that's an area that will show your age, and it's an area that a lot of people neglect when they're doing their skincare routine. You can also do it right on the back of your hands. That's an important area to make sure because it gets a lot of exposure to the sun. And tip number seven, the last tip on the list, is to use a broad spectrum sunscreen every single day. It's so hard to fight against what the UV rays from the sun can do to us. So you need a broad spectrum sunscreen that protects against UVA and UVB. Put that on before you leave the house every single 
day. I cannot stress this enough. Even if it's overcast, even if it's winter, even if you say, I don't go out. If you're just running to the mailbox, running to the store, a quick trip to the doctor or to visit family, that little bit of time that you spend outside between the house and the car or the UV that comes through the window glass of the car, it adds up over time and it will contribute to skin aging. It will over time lead to more crepiness in the skin. So you need to protect yourself. If you're not wearing sunscreen on an area, it's ideal to cover up with long sleeve shirts. Some people even do driving gloves. I don't personally do that, probably should if I was gonna be more serious about my hands, but it depends on the area that you're trying to protect. If you have crepey skin, you want it to look better, you need to protect that area from the sun. So make sure that you're using a sunscreen or other sun protective method every single day. Those are the seven tips to help improve crepey skin. If you are gonna try them out, let me know how they work for you. But I know that if you do them, you're gonna see improvements in your skin. Do be patient because it didn't happen overnight that you developed crepey skin and it's not gonna go away overnight. These are habits you should implement and do consistently in order to get the best results. If you guys have other questions on specific topics you'd like me to address to help the appearance of your skin or your body in some way, I'm happy to do that. Leave them in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, share it with a friend that might also find it helpful. And I'll see you guys on the next video.